Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Kumo, aka Yujiro, the person that is playing currently in this game. And I just wanted to do a quick commentary on the gameplay itself and my thoughts and process of what's going on around the map and how I think and how I play while the game is going on. So, when it comes to mobile games like this, I'm always thinking three, four steps ahead. I'm always thinking what I need to be doing, what I should be doing, what I need to do after pushing this wave, and what I should be doing after put doing the thing that I'm going to be doing after pushing the wave. Things like that. <clears throat> so you're always constantly looking to see what you need to do on the map. So you're never idle, you're never wasting your time, you're always doing something to get yourself the gold and the advantage that you need ahead of the opponent. So now it's, we got just a quick kill there and right now what my process is going on right now is Hanzo has full HP and he's level 4 and she is going to be trying to kill me so I'm going to poke at her a bit if I get the kill it's great if not Hanzo will pick it up. So I'm not recalling yet because I know the enemy team is top lane and I can see if they're coming towards me. Uh, if they go into the river, I have an escape so I will be okay. They don't have anything to catch me. Well, Granger has a dash, but I'm not too worried about him. And the enemy team already is at base. So I knew I was okay for then to make a quick decision to try to bait the other mia into trying to attack me so either i or hanzo can get the kill in even if a lucard or anyone else from top lane tried to rotate it would take at least 20 seconds for them to come even with their dashes and everything maybe not 20 maybe at least 10 to 12 seconds i would have a little window of you know what i should do so when i hit the eight second mark i would try to stay away from that top side so in case they came down they would kill me and that would all be for nothing so just little things like that to keep in mind as you're playing and i'm always looking at the map here i know that someone just died or what whoever's recalling who and the vision on the map right here as you can see bottom lane the minions just died there so i know there's at least two people bottom and you know it that is something you're gonna want to keep in mind when you're playing that you always want to know where your opponents are you always want to know where they are at all times so you don't die so i did not if they if i didn't know where mid was or where their jungler was or where bottom was i would not have gone for that kill because i would have probably died there someone would have counter ganked me or i would have died in process of all that let me fix the camera over here. There we go. Let's go back to my perspective. Okay. Sorry about that. The camera's a little wonky. So, uh, I know a loot card should be coming back soon. Because it takes a while for him to come back. And here he is. I know I can't kill him. I don't really know where anyone else is. There's two people mid. And Belmont's bottom. But at that time, I didn't know if he was bottom for sure or if he didn't push the wave and back up. Because he pushed the wave and then he backed up a bit and he went behind Fog of War so I couldn't see him. So I didn't want him to run up on me and jump. So I know where everyone is now. So I'm completely safe to push this wave up here. So that's how I recommend you guys uh, play. You know, if you're a beginner or if... Um, I'm a beginner to Mobile Legends, but just as a mobile gamer, um, respectively, you always want to know where your opponents are. Don't go for risky plays. Don't chase unless you know where everyone is, or else you could just die for nothing. And the enemy team gets a kill and also an assist, and the assist gives you half the amount of kill, like uh, half the amount of gold a kill does. And if multiple people hit you, they'll all get an assist if you die. If just things like that. Here we're going to go ahead and trade. I wasn't the best option, but I think it was worth it for us because we stole their red buff. So now we know their timer of their red buff and when it will be coming up next. Also, we denied them their red buff so they cannot use it even though we died for it. So it was still a good trade-off. 
right there. So just little things like that will probably pull you way ahead. The main thing to do is when you destroy a tower, the main thing you're going to want to do in the game in general is accumulate as much gold as you can. You accumulate more EXP and gold. The more you accumulate, the more you get, the more EXP and gold you get, the better energy you get, the stronger you're going to be against your opponents. So I, it's always good to clear up lanes and get that gold and also kill the tower. You see how a lot of people, they'll, they'll kill one tower, then they'll keep pushing to the second tier two tower. And if you get it, great, but most of the time in higher end gameplay, you're going to die because everyone's going to collapse on you. So what I, what's really good to do is when you kill the first tower, you rotate to the mid lane or the, the side lanes, whatever tower that are still up there, tier one, you're going to want to focus because that's not just gold for you. It's gold for your entire team. And when your entire team gets a lot of gold, they'll get stronger. That's the main point. It's not a solo game. This isn't Halo. This isn't Call of Duty. You know, this is a team-oriented game, a team strategy game. You cannot win the game without your team. It's very, very important. Your team may be, not be that great sometimes. They may be really... It may even be terrible players, but without them, you cannot win 1v9. And then somehow you do. That's pretty crazy. I don't know how you could, but... You always need a little bit of backup. You always need a little bit of a shield or a little bit of leeway or a little bit of anything. You ha even have your allies die for you so you can win the game yourself. There always needs to be a little bit that you need from them or else the game is completely, it's completely over. So that's why I recommend putting your team far ahead the more gold that they have. For, by you rotating killing all their towers that's gold for your entire team so even if they are behind or they're not the best players at least they have the gold to buy whatever items they need an upgraded item is stronger than a non-upgraded item no matter what so even if they don't pick the best items anyways at least you know you have they have a gold to buy something because you helped them get that gold by pushing down the towers and another thing is assists. If they get assists, even if they they take the kill from you, it's okay. You still get the assist. Don't be mad at them because they KS. It doesn't matter. I know you're the carry. I know you're the core. The game is strictly revolves around your shoulders that you need to carry, but it's okay. At least they will not be... At least they'll get some amount of gold to buy an item so they're not... They won't die in two seconds. You know what I mean? As long as they can take the damage for you... Just throw them in as a human shield and have them die die for you when, and then you clean up. Basically, that's how you that's how you play when your team is kind of um, behind. You know, do not die. Do not go for risky plays. Do not get angry at them when they KS. It's okay. Assist is just as good. You're getting EXP. You're getting gold. The, if you have more gold than your opponent, you're gonna win because you already most likely are more outskilled than your opponent. And if and you know things like that, so just wait until they make a mistake. Is another thing you can do is if you wait for your opponent to make a mistake because they're gonna get greedy and cocky and just be like, oh, you're you're we're way way ahead. We're gonna make risky risky plays and dive you and things like that. You know that is something that you can use to your advantage. A lot of people do that, even in crazy high elo, even like in. Mythic, I, I see people doing the same mistake. They get overconfident and they die, and then boom, the games turn. The tables have flipped. And when you when you gain when your team gets gold and you start coming back, your team will get more confident. They will stop throwing. They'll their attitude will change and just be. If you, as long as you don't tilt your teammate off on purpose, you'll win the majority of your games hands down. Don't cuss them out. Don't call them dumb. Don't be rude to them because they're from a different country and some of the players from those countries are not as skilled as your country. Don't be rude to them. They're on your team. That's the team you're dealt with. That's the hand you're dealt with. Those are the cards you're dealt with. So it's it's better to just um, get try to get along and and try to pull that victory out. Once you're, that victory is is done out of the way and you win, you don't have to buzz, you don't have to play with them again. It's over. There's millions of people that play. You're not, unless you're a, like a top 100 ranked, you're not going to play with the same people. So, you know, just be nice to them. Don't yell at them. Don't tilt them. Don't frustrate them. 
99% of the time, you will win. I guarantee you. You'll win more games if you do not tilt your opponents, you're nice to your opponent, and just be like, hey, it's okay, I'm strong, I can help carry you. Just help them out. Just be like, hey, just follow me. I can I can protect you, and I can win you the game. Just don't be upset. Like, say things like that. I'd be like, oh, you're doing good. You're way better than the enemy team. Don't get first. You know, things like that. Comforting your team and saying nice things to them will make you win more than make you lose. I guarantee it. I know sometimes you can't help it and you'll get extremely frustrated, but that's like the major key thing and factor in the game is I hear people say is they cannot win because of their team. But I guarantee you if you're nice to your team and you follow the, the simple guides that I just explained now, you will win more, way more games than you'll lose. I promise you. So this is just quick tips. Hopefully you guys like it. I kind of just did this on the fly. I kind of just rambled on about what I think is some key important things and important factors. I'll do a little bit more guides on this in the future and my explaining on certain things. And, uh... Yeah, and also, even if you lose, thumb up your team. They'll return the favor. Thumb you up the enemy team. They'll give you a like back. And that's, and then, you know, there's things like that, man. Do things like that. You'll be good to go. Uh, be nice to your team. Uh, I remember in this game that we just played, uh, a couple of the guys in here were like, I have a, um, they had a, a card. It was a, uh, protection card and then i would they're like if i lose i still have my card and i'm like don't worry man we're gonna win dude you're gonna save that card i got this you know just reassuring them means that they will play better because they know that you got them you know just things like that i'm terrible at explaining things but i get i think you guys get what i mean and uh i'm i'm gonna stop uh right here so i don't keep repeating myself and all that jazz but this is some quick tips, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Unranked 2 Legend Game 2.